we got in here? Cabbages, aubergines, peppers, and tomatoes. Looks like we have our work cut out for us. What are we gonna do with all this stuff? Well, I'm gonna try and roast the peppers and preserve them in olive oil, which I've never done before. But that's a lot of peppers. Onions. Yes. Onions. You know? And then Onions. it looks like you've got some um, some cabbage slicing to do. Yeah. Because this will all be sauerkraut. Sauerkraut. Mm hmm. Ooh, Gotta feed the gut, a baby. Big, little, 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 big. What you got there, Gigi? I know. What is it? <laughs> a big one? Yeah. Yeah? Did you help pick those? Which ones did you pick? I. That mine? one? Right? Ooh, that a green one. one. You picked that one? Yeah. Probably. And this one, big one. Mm hmm. This one. Whoa, yeah. Ooh, that's a good one, huh? Yeah. You can eat one of the little ones. Can I find a little one to eat? Yeah. All right, find a little one. Get to a eat. little tummy toe. This one? Uh huh. Oh. Take a bite out of that. Yeah. Uh huh. Pretty good. I think it. It tastes good. It tastes good. All right, well, we better get to work here. It's summertime and the gardens are going crazy, but what that really means for the gardener is that you're gonna spend a ton of time in your kitchen preserving the bounty of the season. So as much fun as it is to be out there weeding in 100 degree temperatures, I'd much prefer to be here and we have a ton to get through today. So we thought it would be fun for you guys to come along and watch some of the preserving that goes on. We've got peppers, tomatoes, cabbages, grapes, milk, all sorts of things to work through today. It's gonna be a busy day. What are we gonna make? Sauerkraut. We're gonna roast some uh, red bell peppers and preserve them in olive oil. We're gonna salt some brie cheese and get it into the cheese cave got to make ricotta the way it's been fermenting for about a day now. I'm not sure what we're going to do with the tomatoes. Spaghetti sauce? Marinara sauce? Maybe something like that. And the aubergines, I think I'm actually going to preserve them in olive oil as well. Are you going to roast them? I think so. I've never done it before. Why not? Give it a shot. This is a first time too. We're just, we're going to try this here. So you roast them whole till they're kind of blackened and then throw them into a bowl and cover them. And that will kind of steam and loosen up their skin. And then we should be able to peel them really easy, add some salt and some vinegar, and then just cover them in olive oil. Years ago, I was watching, um, what was the name of that show? Victorian Farm. And they preserved all kinds of things in olive oil. I had no idea that you could do that, but the olive oil or the oil makes it so no oxygen can get in. So as long as you have a cool place to store them. Will it go rancid, the oil? Theoretically, no, as long as it's below the line of the oil. It's well, poking above, Okay. but the oil preserves it because it basically eliminates any oxygen. Yeah. How long does that preserve it for? Probably like just like within the year or you so? You know, I've, well, I've done tomatoes in olive oil, kept uh -huh. them in the fridge, and they've stayed good for about a year and a half. Does the oil kind of solidify in the, when it gets cool? Yeah, you just kind of, and then you can kind of scoop it out yeah. and then pour a little fresh oil over the top. I don't know. It's worth a shot because peppers don't really freeze well. So if you're wanting to preserve what you grow, if you want to enjoy peppers, and you buy canned peppers at the store, so I don't see why it's not possible. We have a lot of peppers to get. See that little bit? They're blackening. Uh-huh. But, but the reality is if you're gonna grow it, unless you can sell it all, or sell a good majority of it, you have to preserve it. There's just, I mean, there's yeah. no, you can't keep it fresh year round. No, no. So if you're gonna grow 75 feet of peppers, you gotta find a way to preserve them. Yeah, we usually just freeze them. Yeah, but those aren't good. Uh, yeah, they're, they're, they don't... They lose their... Texture. It doesn't make yeah. them good. When you cook them, yeah. Like sauerkraut makes cabbage good. It yeah. makes it so good and yeah. so good for you. Yeah. Culinarily, I'm not interested in 
you know, even like things like freezer meals, mm -hmm. I don't really enjoy because yeah. everything just turns to mush. It gets overcooked. Yeah. I'd rather just eat a really good omelet. Mm hmm. Or something really simple for supper than something not as good. Could you freeze dry the peppers and maybe preserve them better that way? Yeah, maybe. I don't have a freeze dryer though. They're expensive. And yeah. Really small. Yeah. Small batches. Yeah. So not super conducive for a big family. Okay. Sue and I stayed up late making this last night. We've never harvested grapes from our property before until this year. And these are just some table grapes we grew, but they're kind of like concords. They have that flavor. And we make grape jelly. Mm. And it's set. It's yeah. magic. Mm -hmm. There is a recipe for this on the blog. Not for grape jelly specifically, but for honey sweetened jam, which is what that is. There is a recipe for that on the blog. Cool. This is going to work. It's going to be really good. Roasted red peppers. Mm -hmm. Pasta. Pizza. Mm -hmm. What are you looking at over there? Those jars behind you, what are yeah. those? Those are some pickles. Yeah. Gardeners who have it all together would harvest their pickles when they're small, right? Mm -hmm. Like a pickle. But I waited until they were like this size. They're not bitter, they're still really good. So I just scooped the seeds out and then sliced them up and that's just in a generic salt brine for fermentation with some pickling spices. Yummy. It'll be there for a few days and then we'll move it to the fridge downstairs. Mm. Will you cut these aubergines up? Yeah, I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut them into two kind of thick strips, mm -hmm. then grill the strips, and then just pack those with spices and a little vinegar and a little olive oil in some jars. Gotcha. Because my favorite way to eat eggplant is when it's been grilled and vinegared and herbed and salted and then have that on a crusty piece of bread. Can mm -hmm. you imagine being able to have that in January? Sounds yummy. Oh. That'd be really good. I'm really pleased with these eggplants. Eggplants can have a tendency to get really bitter. These ones didn't. How would you eat eggplant? Well, I would eat it roasted with vinegar and oil and herbs on a piece of crusty bread. Oh. Or I would make it like eggplant parmesan or I would just grill it with a steak, have it on the side. I think what people tend to do is really overcook vegetables in general. I think that's one of the best things about gardening is you get to kind of experiment mm -hmm. more with vegetables. Mm -hmm. These are smelling really good, but you know what would smell really good right now? Some steak. A latte. Oh, yep. that would smell good too. It would smell good. What yep. are you gonna do about that? I can't be this pretty and make a latte. <laughs> Let's go. We're going off here, round two. Into the bowl? Into the bowl. Are you gonna cover them? Yeah, buddy. How's that going, honey? You're doing a great job. Fantastic. Just peeling the skin off of peppers. Pretty normal job. You're doing great. Feel like? I mean, everybody does this, right? This is how most people spend their Saturday. That's right. What you guys got going out here? Apples. Some chess? Or some checkers? Yeah, and some apples. What? All right. No, oh, no, thank you. I'm going to finish in the kitchen. Okay. Who's winning? Um, I got two. I got two wheels. These two wheels got none of my. Ooh, well, we'll see what happens. What are you putting in there? I put in some oregano, some rosemary, just to season them a little bit more, and then top them off with olive oil, and then they'll just pop into the fridge. I'll go in the fridge just like that? Yep, just like this. 
long as they stay topped up with oil every time you use them, it should be good. The amount of time that we spent harvesting this food today versus the amount of time that we spent preserving it, mm. significantly different. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But now it's preserved for all eternity. <laughs> All winter long. All we'll, winter we'll keep eating fresh peppers all summer and some of the fall. And then we'll be able to munch on these and preserve more too. Sure. Until. Thanks for making me feel better about that. Yeah. Got your back, boo. are pretty though, aren't they? Yeah. You're just getting the air bubbles out of them? Yep. Make sure there's no oxygen in there. Exactly. Oxygen is not our friend. These are great for breathing. For breathing, just mm -hmm. not for preserving food. Good observation, mm -hmm. Owen. Yep. What's going on here? All right, so it's time for some sauerkraut. This is one of the times I bust out a tool in the kitchen. I use this decade old food processor and it really helps to get the cabbage nice and thin, saves a ton of chopping. So, get to shredding. What's cool about this too is when you have other animals like chickens or pigs, none of this goes to waste. So all the leaves, outside leaves I'm picking off, the cores, all of it, it could all be chickens. It's like a circle of life. Hey, Stu. Go ahead. Stu, have a statistic for you. Okay. My statistic is that if you grow your own produce, there's 100% chance you're going to eat bugs. True or false? Is that a true statistic or a false statistic? I think That's it's your, true. Is that what you're asking? I'm making it up right now. There is a 100% chance that you eat bugs. <laughs> Cabbage worms, aphids, probably. I haven't the... done any statistical research on it. You haven't? My anecdotal evidence would be that that's 100% accurate. 100%. But you know what else? What? If you grow zero of the produce that you eat, there's probably still 100% chance. <laughs> that's true. <laughs> All right, ready? That's what, probably a sixth of the cabbage we have to do? Yeah, we still have tons left. Maybe we grew too much. Tons. I'm gonna need you to clean all this up now. Let's get some chips. A little pico de gallo. Gallo. Ay, ay, ay. Ooh, the ricotta. So when you make cheese, certain types of cheese, you're left with whey. And if you let that whey ferment at room temperature for about a day, you 
oil it, and then you strain it, you're left with ricotta. Waste not, want not, you know what I'm saying? This will take a long time to strain, but the little particles of ricotta are so small. But I tell you what, it is so creamy and so good. What are you doing here? It's a professional knot right there. Yeah. What are you trying to do? I do everything professional. I don't know if you knew that about me. Now it has a crown. Mm. Now so we'll just let it strain. Let it drain the way off of the rest of the... Yep. While we eat lunch. Starving. Yes, I'm very hungry. Ricotta. Salt. Get a little salt on there. No salt. What kind of cheese did you make out of the curds? Um, I made brie cheese. You made a brie? Yes. And this was from the leftover whey? And this is just what's left over in the whey, which I know it looks very um, humble. But it is humble. It's so, so divine. So over here. More cheese. Away. Way. The way cut away from me. Oh, so punny. <laughs> yeah. So this is the cheese I made yesterday. That's brie. It can be brie if I age it correctly. It can also be just a fresh farmer's cheese. Either way, it's gonna get some salt, and then I'm gonna let it air dry for about a day. And then it can go to the cheese cave. I'm gonna dump this. Okay. So once you start preserving all this food, then you run into the problem of having to find a place to put it. And we have found many creative places over the year, but this year, finally, we finished our root cellar downstairs.